love, peace, honesty, and forgiveness is what we are all about here, my friend. I am Y311H. I'm really, really glad you have clicked this video. May God Almighty bless you abundantly for that gesture. My bunny friend here is Kasungumo's wife. If you want to see Kasungumo himself, you can check on the, that previous episode. All the way from Africa, man, with lots of good vibes. Before we dive in, let's hear from this good book here of knowledge. Let's hear the words of today. And here's another story. From Mark 12. He then began to speak to them in a parable. A man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they seized him beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Then he sent another servant to them. They struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully. He sent still another, and that one they killed. He sent many others. Some of them they beat, others they killed. He had one left to send, a son, whom he really loved. He sent him last of all, saying, they will respect my son. But the tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Let's give thanks to God Almighty. Dear Lord, thank you very much for this person that is seeing my face here. Thank you for your goodness, Father, and the goodness of life. Thank you for your love, Father. Thank you even for forgiveness of all our sins, Father. Help us to stay according to your ways and be with us every minute till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Let's dive in, beautiful source. So I just saw this video of uh, a German Shepherd not liking the word Uga, and I just said it to my dog and she freaked out. Let me see if it's a thing. <laughs> hey, Uga. Uga. <laughs> what is it with the word Uga? Why don't you like that? I had her calm down. Let me see if, if it works again. Uga. <laughs> Uga. Uga. Yeah, she doesn't like it. That's weird. Huh. Ah, and on another alleged video here released by the Vatican from the timekeeper, we see that uh, back then in AM 2567, what? This is the future, not back then, I read it. This is crazy, man. Look at all those buildings there. Or being bombed or what's going on? This is some crazy, crazy stuff. On 2567, oh my God. Do you think there will be a time something like this will ever happen? This is scary. Oh, that's even more scary than believable. It's thinking about people that can release footage from the future. This is crazy. From the future? How? How now can you explain this? Look at that uh, mushroom giant, mushroom smoke. What could that uh, have been? Oh my god, this is crazy. People will start to blow themselves up or what's up? Oh. Look at how the cities in the future to come look like. If this is by any chance, is it. But all this, my friends, is for entertainment purposes, you see? Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. 
Where does the, the place look like? Uh, it's a debris of some place which have been destructed or destroyed by something. Destroyed? This is crazy. What could have happened here? Oh my god. Magic works whether you believe in it or not. Or so I learned from my father, who is a U.S. Army counterintelligence agent. So I really think this applies to folk magic, Catholic folk magic, Celtic folk magic, Irish folk magic, French folk magic. It applies to everything. But as I've been thinking about it a little bit more, it really does apply to anything. Even if you're doing ceremonial magic and are performing ceremonial magic ritual, you don't really have to believe in what you're doing in order for it to work. Now, you do have to believe in yourself, but I'm even starting to doubt that. So let me tell you a few stories about my dad. I didn't know he was a counterintelligence agent until I was at least in my 30s. And some of the conversations were a little bit frustrating because he would tell you what he was do or what he did, but not always why he did it. In fact, he said, we never knew why we did stuff. Uh, we just followed the order to go accomplish whatever we were supposed to accomplish. And we didn't even have to do it the way we were ordered to do it. He said, in fact, he never did because he never trusted anybody. He always found a, an alternative way to get the job done. And as long as the job was done, the job was done. So he was about 19 and walking somewhere behind the Iron Curtain where he wouldn't tell me. And I asked him, weren't you afraid? And he, he said, no. And I said, well, how could you not be afraid in that situation? And he says, well, I just walked down the street saying, I'm a Russian, I'm a Russian, I'm a Russian, I'm a Russian, I'm a Russian. And it took me a long time to figure that out. He was shoving the fear out of his head by concentrating on the fact that he was a comfortable Russian. And so anybody who was sensitive around him who might not have noticed anything visually, but felt something was off, was fooled by the fact that he focused so hard on his mantra in his head, I'm being a Russian. And I'm a Russian, I'm a Russian, I'm a Russian, was his form of magic. And it worked. He also told me that he had four female friends in high school that he really respected. And I don't remember the names, but he mentioned each name 50, 60 years later, so he knew them. And he said he asked each one a particular type of question. For example, he'd ask Susie, do I go left or right? And he'd ask Kelly, am I walking into danger here? And he'd get a yes or no answer. And I can't remember the other two, but he did tell me that one of them was right 100% of the time and another very close to it. Now I know it didn't work all the time because he was captured twice. So I've always wondered who were those voices in his head? Was this his spiritual guides disguising as four high school young ladies he knew? Or were these four goddesses? I don't know. And it really doesn't matter because his magic worked for him. And now for the cool one. He was in another unit besides what he did as an agent. And that unit had to go for some desert trading. And he happened to be talking to one of the Native American members of that unit. And they were talking about being caught behind enemy lines during a battle. And the Native said, just become a tree. And my father says, what do you mean? So this Native guy taught my father how to become a tree. He says he went out to crowded parks in big cities where people would notice you acting weird and he would walk up to a tree and become a tree and pay attention and it appeared to him nobody noticed him. So he tried it out in the field a couple of times and both times he had people looking for him walk straight past him. So I said, Dad, you don't believe in magic. What do you call a human being that can turn into a tree? And he looked for a moment, he says, well, I never thought of it that way. What do you mean you never thought of it that way? 
So my point is, is that he didn't believe in magic, but he was able to do things that we today think of as magic. So once you're involved in metaphysical spirituality and you're seeking spiritual knowledge and all that sort of stuff, keep in mind that everything you're learning can be applied to the magic that you want to do, even if you don't think of it as magical at the time. It's just a matter of putting all the pieces together and moving forward. You don't have to believe it, but it's usually a good idea to forget you did it in the first place. But that's a whole nother video. I hope this helps. Oh, this guy is captured a moment of threatening strike. Hit an erupting star. So the Bible tells us that he measured six cubits and a span, which probably isn't helpful to most people. But in Hebrew culture, a cubit is the distance from your elbow to your fingertip. It's about 18 inches, so a foot and a half. And so six of those would be nine feet, and a span is the distance of your hand, the length of your hand. So probably about nine foot six inches is where, where most people land. So for comparison's sake, in the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest man that we have in our modern times is a guy by the name of Robert Wadlow, and he was eight foot 11 inches American, and they took his measurements in the 1940s. You know, seven inches shy of where we would put Goliath. What? Is this a coincidence? Take a look at this, my friends. Look at this school bus. Hmm. It resembles a prison bus in some way, apart from the colors. Oh, look at the prison bus. This is crazy. Look at the school hallway. And look at the prison hallway. Why are you here? So much resemblance. This is crazy. Prison hallway looks like this. Look at the school recess. Uh-huh. And the prison recreational place. This is unbelievable. Why would they resemble each other like this so much? Hmm. Look at school food. This is school food, English people. Prison, my friend. These English people in prison, they are eating delicacies. What? This is a buffet for prison people. Unbelievable. School teachers, look at the prison teachers there. Oh my god, English people. You mean the prisons there look like this? Ha! Huh? I would say I would want to be in one, but it doesn't look like God can have a hard time there. My friend, these people are well friend. Come see. Hey, hey guys, trying to yeah. fix it, guys. They can't. We're right here in Miami. Blasting them out right here with the glow buster. Got the phones right here. We got everything here going on, guys. The baby was just doing it. Join the live. We're about to go live on this, guys. We're blasting everything out of the sky. Look at that over there. AI is trying to fix it, guys. But they can't. Oh my god. What is this? Is this a laser cutting or what is this? What is going on here, my friend? Oh! A welding machine that is. A welding machine wireless. that. Wireless. How? How, how is this possible? What oh, type of technology is that? And in other places, um, Good Vibes guy here brought their dog some puppy. Ah, and the dog is just happy. You see? Even greeting him and uh, good vibes. The dog is very, very happy and excited. Oh, to me to other galaxies because water is in the cosmos. The space is water. All right, water is space. It's the same thing. So the uh, the ocean will be like a quick route. So like, okay, if you on this planet of planet Kai right now, say you wanted to go like this. Is how we used to use the ocean back in the day before they invaded us, so you can know what the ocean was really for. Other than not just drinking, right? It worked. It worked as a uh, as a as a um a particle generator and an antimatter machine too, which it still works this way. This is why they don't want us in the fucking oceans. And we've never been in the oceans. No, we haven't. Yo, 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 yo ass ain't been in the ocean no day in your life. About a road to yacht. That's the most ocean in you to deep. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never in no scuba diving all over the ocean. You don't know what's going on under there. But I'm telling you. So basically, uh, basically you can hop in the ocean and go from the 99th galaxy. I mean the 999 galaxy and be in the 10th galaxy like that. So this is also very important. You don't lack anything 
because the whole game here is to get robbed of your nature, to get robbed of your truth. You are being convinced you are weak, powerless, not good enough at the beginning of your life. The big joke is that you are complete and whole. Always, you might say, the negative polarity convinced you you are worthless and you need to add things to you in order to be good enough. So the whole joke is you are whole and complete every moment, every single moment. And when you believe otherwise because you've been mind controlled again, then you are a slave to others, to corporations. Corp means corpse, you know, to dead entities. So it's like a possession. If you believe you are not good enough without certain material things, then they have you. If you think you need them in order to provide you with your source of happiness, they have you. You are a slave to the mind control. You are in ego. So the whole purpose of this lifetime is to transcend the ego identity that we created when we were very small as a child. The whole point of this life is to regain what we already were born with. Wealth, health, happiness, love is already ours every moment. It's our birthright. The joke is we sign ourselves away to be a product of someone else, to be a wage slave, a sex slave, an entertainment slave. You have all types of slave and a blood sacrifice slave. Guess what that is? That's the porn industry. That's the war industry. That's a pharmaceutical industry. Those industries, those corporations are not your friend, people. They are here to enslave you. And as long as people believe that they are not whole and complete yet within themselves, they don't know their true identity, they don't know they are divine, and they have everything they need already, then you keep being a slave to others. In jobs, also in relationships, if you think you need the other in order to feel complete or whole, and you are also a slave to the same programs. It's one big program, and that big program is thinking you are separate, thinking you are this ego. So it's about ego. This is deep, people. Everything is about transcending the ego. That's our purpose in this life. That's how we ascend, evolve. That's how we graduate out of this dimension, out of this realm. So watch your own ego. Watch where you find yourself in lack. Because it's not true, it has been programmed into you because you are whole and complete and you have everything you need when you are born here. You are born with everything already. A loving creator will not let you be born with lack. It's only the persons in the Maya, in the illusion, that convince you you are not worthy or good enough that can create lack for you. You have everything within, everything. All the money you need, all the love you need, all the connections you need, all the resources you need, everything is yours. And the first step is knowing who you are, knowing it's yours, knowing everything goes from within. Once you discover that the source is really within, you will never be poor in anything again. You have found the treasure within, which is already ours when we are born. We just need to purify that mind control we have been program with. That's the game here. Well, I wish you all success with that game. Now I want to show you a form of meditation which was explained to me by a Zen master who said it really is one of the very best kinds of meditation, even better than sitting for a long time and getting your knees aching. What you do is you just put your hands on your hips with the wrist upwards. And now, let's all laugh. <laughs> Many individuals have completely misunderstood us when we talk about the idea of abundance simply being the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. This idea, while it opens the door to other ways that things can occur synchronistically without necessarily involving money, does not in any way, shape, or form exclude money as one of the ways in which abundance can be expressed on your planet. All of our tools and techniques are always inclusive, never exclusive. Some individuals even go so far as to attempt to convince other individuals that there is something inherently wrong with money.
as if in and of itself it had some sort of negative vibration. It does not. This is a complete misunderstanding and misinterpretation of everything we have said. Allow yourselves to understand. You are changing, and there will come a day when you may not require that particular symbol of abundance anymore. However, at this time, many of you are still functioning within a frame of reference wherein what you call money is a valid form of exchange equal to any other form of valid exchange with respect to the concept of abundance. In this video, he speaks about why you should never steal from a target. Make sure you watch until the end and let me know what you think in the comments below. I just found out why you should never steal from a target, and it is terrifying. I was talking to my friend who works in asset protection at Target, and he was telling me about the insane extent Target goes to prevent theft. And it was scaring me because I was thinking back to every time that I may or may not have stolen something from Target. He gave me this scenario to explain it to me. It was like, you go to Target, you get all your items, and then you go to the self-checkout. You scan all of your items except for a pack of gum. And you put everything in a bag, pay, walk out the door, and you think that you just got away with stealing that pack of gum. Next time you go to Target, because you think that you can get away with it, maybe you steal something else. Could be another pack of gum, could be something a little more expensive, like sunglasses. Nonetheless, you think you're getting away with stealing these items, so the pattern just continues and continues. But little did you know, from that first pack of gum that you stole, Target had been building a file on you. They do this using facial recognition technology, so as soon as they catch you stealing, they'll capture your face, and every time you come into the store after that, they know it's you. That's across every Target. Like, you steal from one Target, the other Target knows about it. And they basically just just continue gathering evidence of you stealing through the video cameras until you hit $1,200 of stolen items. At that point, they call the police and submit all of that evidence to them because $1,200 of stolen goods is enough to arrest you. So yeah, they know you're stealing. They, they just want to arrest you. And it got me scared because I was like, how much money am I up to then? Like $200, $500? If I accidentally don't scan something, will they come for me? What? Unbelievable. This is why women live longer than men. Some good vibes guy here was just having fun. There is no trick, all right? There is no sleight of hand. The deal is, if you place them like this, you're allowed to touch them once. You can't fumble. You can't use your mouth to move them. And the object is to just go, watch carefully, take your eyes off them, and just grab them and go like that. And get them like that. Very simple. Ha! Huh. How? Breaking news. Ooh, what's going on there? Take a look at this in the sky there. It looks like something, something. What is that? An orb of light or is a ship with many lights. This is unbelievable. What could that be? <laughs> Kitty. Be now. Hey, push. <laughs> Breaking UFO news. The Las Vegas alien creatures were real. That's what veteran crime scene reconstruction analyst Scott Ryder believes. And in a startling new claim, he says that he has evidence of the beings using a cloaking device in the backyard of the Kenmore family's Las Vegas home. Analyzing the video frame by frame, Ryder identified what he believes is an alien head with some sort of smoke around it peering over the fence. Ryder applied the same principles he would in a high-profile crime investigation, and he concluded that these entities are real. Collaborating with Jim Quirk from the Extraterrestrial Reality Podcast, Ryder recreated the scene of the April 30th, 2023 sighting. He pointed out a second visual anomaly in the video, and he also emphasized the importance of the totality of the evidence, including the recorded light in the sky and the police presence. Ryder acknowledges that some may disagree with his analysis but he asserts that these beings are in the real world environment with the Kenmore family, raising questions about their origins and intentions. Ryder stated that this is just the beginning of the investigation, hinting at more evidence. Were these real alien or interdimensional beings using a cloaking technique? What do you think? Do you believe? Ah. And in uh, China, some good vibes guy here have something he wants to show to us. 
Let's take a closer look of what is going on. What do you think my friend uh, Good Vibes guy is up to? Maybe some extraordinary level Tai Chi or uh, something like that. Watch closely. Uh, the power of chi. These guys can do an incredible stuff, wonderful source. Look at this. Yo, there, there. Just so it you see some bruisery techniques here and there. And uh, wah! Wah! What? Hey, nothing. Oh, wait. The brick just moved. Is that uh, Kados Kainasi stuff or uh, is uh, Tai Chi? That is crazy. Imagine now such a bro. Oh, it can uh, disable your whole stomach. Seen in Peru, what do you think this could have been? Ooh, ooh. Oh my god, look at this one. A floating, uh, what looks like a UAP? A disc shaped flying object. Whoa, what is that thing? Hey, Diver encounters three job USOs on Dave from another world. This is crazy. This guy dived in the water and came across a. Uh, some USO. I think USO is an identified disabled MAGD object. Is that is that what it means? Yeah, I think so. But now this is crazy. Look at that creature, wonderful source. Okay. Now, how how did it reach there? Where did it come from? Maybe or maybe there is another world below the water. Hi. Oh my God. Look look at that thing. Moving just normally in the world. This is crazy, my friends. Oh. Oh, this is unbelievable. Some people dive inside the water and go deep, deep up to the, where the ocean you can step on the floor of the ocean. This is unbelievable. Oh, my friend. These people never stop to surprise us. Do you think, my friends, these are uh, normal stuff or just another fish that moves in a peculiar way? And uh, makes uh, good vibes humans think it's an alien. You leave always, your comments. Always ask God how you should respond to any situation that you're dealing with. One day as I was reading the story about uh, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Well, he was told he didn't he didn't come raise him from the dead until four days. And he was told about it two days before that. So to to us to the you know to probably his family why did you wait so long why did you wait two days before you came and while i was pondering this god told me that jesus waited two extra days because he was waiting for his father's instruction of when to move now if jesus waited the son of god waited for his father for an instruction before he moved isn't it more so for us to do the same thing. So I want to encourage you today. Any situation that you come across that you don't know how to respond, go to God and say, how do you want me to respond to this? Sometimes when I've asked him that, he gives me nothing. That means do not respond. That's how I take it. But don't you know the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy us every single day? But if we listen to the Holy Spirit inside of us, and follow his voice and respond to things the way he wants us to respond to things. Don't you know that you will avoid every single trap the enemy has set for you throughout the day? But if you make your own decisions without the Holy Spirit's leading, this is how I'm going to respond. This is what I'm going to do. Don't you know that you're walking blindly and you can fall into the enemy's traps? God sees those traps. And before he tells you how to respond to any situation, he, he, he takes those traps in consideration of where they're at. He takes you in consideration, your personality, how unique you are, what you like, what you do, don't like. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? He knows all that about you. And before he tells you how to respond to a situation, he takes all that in con into consideration, including the other person in case it's a person that you're dealing with. So, I mean, you are, God is the creator of the universe. He is all wisdom. There is no one more wise than him. Why would we not want to listen to him and do what he asks us to do? I'm telling myself that daily because it boggles my mind that we push him aside and do our own thing. 
and then we just have such a troubled life. We're falling into all the traps of the enemy when we could avoid all those things. When we could avoid. And if you're one that says, I don't hear from God, I mean, let me just challenge you. Take it slow. Start talking to him as if he was sitting beside you. Take a walk and talk to him. Go in your office, anywhere, anywhere you feel comfortable, and talk to him as if he was right beside you. Until the, and do that until it's comfortable. When you read something in his word you don't understand, ask him a question. When, when you're obviously dealing with situations, ask him a question. And then, then pay attention to the spontaneous thoughts that you receive throughout the day, especially after you've asked him a question. Sometimes he's answered me right away in my mind. Sometimes I'll be watching a movie and there somebody says something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my answer. We can't put God in a box. He will. You can be staring at a tree and get your answer. I mean, it's just amazing. He's just amazing. Start talking to him. And just take it slow because you will eventually recognize him, recognize his voice, recognize his hand because you have spent enough time with him. Develop a relationship with him. He is a person. Develop a relationship with him. He desires that so much. And you will every just start slow. Every day you'll get more comfortable until eventually it's going to be like he's walking beside you and you will talk with him as if he's walking beside you all day long. And he is. He's inside of you. He's around you. He's precious and amazing and good. He is so, so good. And when he puts things or allow, he doesn't put hard things in your path, but when he allows them, it's for a reason. Ask him how you should respond and move on and enjoy this beautiful creation he made just for you.